Hello, hello, I'm Kirsty Broder. It's great to be here with you live today. If you're watching live, um, please say hello. Let me know you're watching and where you're watching from. And if you're watching on replay, great. It's great to have you here. Let me know that you're watching on replay as well and tell me where in the world you are watching from. Um, as you know, I am Kirsty Broder. I help middle-aged women to boost their health, uh, to look younger, to increase their confidence, and also to live more happily. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then stick around. I've just been reading a, a blog about emotional eating, and I thought it was really interesting. So I've pulled out some really interesting parts from it, and I wanted to share them with you today. We've all been there and probably go there quite regularly, to be honest, where you end up um, reaching for the slightly less healthy snacks um, to kind of fill yourself up, even when you're not necessarily hungry, hungry, but just because you may be bored, perhaps you are upset, perhaps you've just got kind of time on your hands, perhaps you're feeling low in yourself. And emotional eating or eating for a purpose other than getting nourishment or you know satiation is actually considered emotional eating and um let me know put your hand up in the comments if you have caught yourself or if you kind of think there's that you might be emotional eating um perhaps more often than you maybe should be because one of the big problems with emotional eating of course is that we tend to go for the less healthy options and end up just snacking on whatever's in the snack cupboard i find this it's a it's it's really hard especially you know when you're at home and if you're a if you're a stay at home work from home mum whatever let me know you can put a one in the comments because the temptation is always there you know and um and it's very very easy i've just sat here and had a coffee and i got into the habit of having my coffee in the morning and um i've got these chocolate brownies they're delicious little kind of squares of chocolate brownies yesterday i had two of them I didn't need to, but they were there, you know, and it literally boredom being at home, you know, and then you got in the habit, get in the habit of like, I'm having my coffee and I'm going to have my chocolate brownie. I don't necessarily need it. I just want it. And that's a real kind of critical thing about emotional eating. And in actual fact, sometimes you might know you don't need it and you know you don't really want it, but you eat it anyway because it's habit. Um, so a, a couple of, a couple of points then. So yeah, we start to use emotional eating as a coping mecha mechanism. It kind of makes you feel better. And sometimes we feel that food is the only thing that we've got kind of control over. Um, that's, you know, so it gives us that sense of control. So what can we do about it? Well, being aware of it. Um, and the suggestion in the blog was to like, start to keep a record of when and what you eat. So what and when you eat so that you can being aware like is is so critical in, in any kind of habits and trying to trying to make better habits. We have to actually realize that there's an issue that then we become aware of it so that we can make a change. Just trying to read your comment, Kat. Guilty of it. No, no, you don't need it. It makes you feel better. Absolutely. It's emotional eating. And, you know, we're, we're all it's I don't think it's anything to be kind of guilty of. I think it really is that. Um, it's something that you know we all do and we all do it from time to time some of us do it more often some of us do it less often but i think everybody uh, has an element of that need that want that desire to eat even when we don't necessarily need to um so yeah so keeping a record of it so just kind of switching on to when it is that you're more likely to do it and again you know we'll sit in front of the telly in an evening and it, you get the kind of munchies, don't you? And it's like, I've eaten my dinner maybe at 5 p.m. We've had a decent meal, yet it gets that time, eight, nine o'clock in the evening when you, you want to be having something snacky. I'm sure I'm not alone. Um, and it's really difficult to resist the urge because stuff's there. And, you know, we'll give ourselves all the excuses as well as to why it's okay and that sort of thing. And I'm not saying we must not, must not eat stuff. That's not what I'm saying here. But being aware of to kind of, you know, to catch yourself <laughs> before you do it. If you are trying to lose weight, if you're trying to live more healthily, then looking for more healthy options or, or healthier alternatives. An apple with some peanut butter, um, you know, it will satisfy that craving, yet it's going to be fewer calories than the chocolate brownie um, or the packet of Pringles or whatever. 
Pringles, my goodness. I mean, they're like one of the worst things that we have <laughs> because once you pop, you can't stop. And um, that tube will be gone between the two of us very quickly. So um, actually we started buying the smaller packs of Pringles um, because that way we, we would limit ourselves to one small pack rather than a whole tube. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a fact of life. We, we, we eat when we're bored, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, identify your triggers. So boredom, sadness, being upset, angry. Um, you know, Kat, you're saying that it makes you feel better. Um, yeah, but then you, you probably, how do you feel afterwards? You know, you kind of feel better at the time and then you start thinking, oh, darn, I didn't need it. I didn't want it. We should not eat in it. Um, you know, it, it is tricky. Um, so <laughs> the, 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 there's a difference between physical hunger and emotional hunger. And if you want um, my list of differences between physical and emotional hunger, it can help you to identify really um, whether you need or, you know, need or just want the food, basically. So I've got this little list. It's, it's kind of a list of five, five points to what constitutes physical hunger and what constitutes emotional hunger. And I can send that to you if you just want to put tips down below. Now, if you're struggling with food, perhaps you're feeling kind of unhappy in how you... Um, in how you are at the moment, perhaps you wish your clothes would fit better, perhaps you're keen to, you know, lose a bit of weight, lose a bit of fat, lean up a little bit. Um, if you want to learn more about what I've doing, that what I'm doing, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to be, um, you know, eating a calorie deficit or you know, just eating salads every day. Um, just comment lean below, and I can share more information with you about what I'm doing to shift a little bit of fat feel healthier in myself and lots of other benefits but you can just put um lean down below and i'll share some more information with you if you want to take a look at what i'm doing right thanks for joining me cat it's been great to jump on and see you today i'm gonna head off now i've got to pick the kids up real soon because they finish early for um spring break easter's coming it's nearly time for easter eggs too <laughs> right take care for now